Hello everyone, I'm Erin. Welcome to my beautiful Unschool Life. I am currently running an Unschool in Uganda and today I wanted to show you a little bit about this place where we are living because it's kind of an extraordinary little homestead and I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. So I wanted to take you for a tour. Welcome to Bush Baby Lodge. The first thing you'll notice when you get to Bush Baby is that it has a gate and a gatekeeper. I've never had that before in Canada, but it's pretty standard here in Uganda. The next thing you're going to notice is that this is the bumpiest road ever. It took me four tries to film this sequence without making you seasick. And it's still really bad. I'm sorry if I had a drone, it wouldn't so be so bumpy. This wouldn't even be a road in Canada. This would be an ATV trail, but it turns out this is actually pretty good. Now that I've traveled around Uganda a bit, I've seen a lot worse. As you arrive at the Bush Baby compound, you will be met by Bush Baby's official greeters, Blackie, Shadow, and Muzi, and you go through the gate into the Bush Baby compound. That building is called the Kasisira. It's where we take most of our meals. It's where we socialize in the evenings. There's the fully stocked wet bar and there's the buffet. This is the kids' play area. There's a treehouse, a sand pit, lots of swings, a slide, and the Ninja Warrior Slackline Obstacle Course. This is the accommodation. If you are a guest for the night at Bush Baby, this is where you would stay. There is so much outdoor space here. Sometimes they serve dinner outside and we often have campfires. But of course, my favorite thing about this spot is the view at sunset. So the Bush Baby compound is maybe four or five acres, but it's only a little part of this property. The property is huge. It's one square mile, 640 acres. I would consider it to be a large homestead, but in Africa, they call it a mixed farm. So let's take a tour. The newest animal at Bush Baby Lodge is these sweet little fluff balls. There are five rabbits in all four females and one male. So I'm pretty sure that there will be more than five rabbits very soon. The kids are just in love with them. Next, let's check out the stable. Mr. Collins, Blaze and Njoki only arrived on the farm about a month ago. The children have been having riding lessons and they've been enjoying every minute of it. The horse's yard is over an acre, and you can see them from the Bush Baby Casisira. Just south of the Bush Baby Lodge compound, you will find the dairy. This is where the cows go to be milked twice every day. Right now, there are 12 milking cows. And as you can see, they are hand milked. I don't know if you've ever hand milked a cow, but it is very labor intensive. I can't imagine how strong these guys have gotten milking 12 cows twice a day. These cows provide enough milk for the people on the property, plus some to sell. Now, the cows graze in several different pastures throughout the day, in three separate groups. The older calves and the heifers, the milking cows, and the younger calves, you'll see them just wandering around wherever they want. From the dairy, we head further south to the piggery, which is one of our favorite places because pigs are so cute. Each of those doors opens to a large stall. I would guess there are probably about 150 pigs here altogether. There are cute little tiny pigs, curious middle-sized pigs, one beast of a boar, and several giant exhausted looking mama pigs. From the pigs, we go to the chickens. These are all egg layers, Rhode Island Reds. They produce enough eggs to supply everyone on the property, plus some to sell. 
If you have ever seen an egg operation in North America, you'll know that these chickens have way more space than most egg barns and lots of perches. But these hens are looking pretty naked. Some of it is just molting, the seasonal loss of feathers, but they are fighting. Luckily, the owners have been talking about ways of giving the chickens more entertainment so that they have better things to do than pick on each other. So from here, we go to the goats. They spend the night safe in this little barn, but the rest of the time they have free range over this huge territory. All of the adult goats have a leash. It is used to herd them home at the end of the day. And sometimes they are tethered to a clump of grass or a peg if there's a certain area that needs grazing. You'll see this all over the country. Goats pegged at the side of the road, basically maintaining the roadside for free. From the goats, we go to the donkeys. The donkeys live in this little valley set back from the road. There are four of them, and I think they are all female. But they won't let me get anywhere near them. One is visibly pregnant, so fingers crossed we get to see a baby soon. Next we can check out the beef cattle. These cattle are a type called Boran. It's native to Africa and adapted to this specific climate. They have long, saggy bits of skin on their neck called a dewlap, which helps cool them down in the heat. And a fluid-filled hump on their backs that keeps them hydrated. And you can see that the cattle cohabitate with the sheep. This breed of sheep does not produce wool, but it is kept for its meat. The sheep and the cattle graze together over a fairly large territory. That's it, that's all the animals, sort of. But I'll get back to that. Let's tour the gardens. This is the bush baby garden. It is probably close to an acre. It's got all your typical garden things, tomatoes, parsley, lettuce, cucumbers. There's a compost pile with the obligatory volunteer pumpkin. <laughs> There is one very special thing growing in this garden. Strawberries. Strawberries are pretty rare in this hot climate. The two teachers that I work with had never tasted strawberries before, which blows my mind. So we had to fix that as soon as we could. The bush baby garden makes my garden look pretty dinky, but it's nothing compared to the garden that's just a few minutes walk away. It belongs to the matriarch of the family and it is absolutely massive. They practice succession planting in this garden, so this is only one of four patches of beans growing right now. And with a 12-month growing season, that means they always have a patch of beans producing. They always have a patch of watermelon producing, and tomatoes and corn. Just look at the size of this watermelon plot. It's bigger than my entire garden twice over. And of course, the obligatory volunteer pumpkin in the compost pile. This is the pineapple field. Pineapples take 18 months to produce, so there's always lots of pineapples in various stages of development. If that wasn't enough, there's another garden in the valley, about half as big as the last one. Another garden on the side of the hill near the piggery, which is currently planted exclusively with sweet potatoes. And there are still two more gardens, one here and one here. So none of these gardens are organic. In Canada, I try to keep my garden organic, but I wasn't here for long before I realized that the bugs in Uganda are of a different quality than the bugs in Canada. <laughs> So I can understand that they have to use some chemicals now and then. There are some more dangerous pests in Uganda. We have seen a few venomous snakes. And then there's this little dude. 
who is a jackal who came to visit one night. But luckily the elite hunting team was on the case. That's Shadow. That's the jackal. That's Shadow. That's Blackie. That's Tinky. She's clearly not one of the guard dogs. It's not in her job description. The jackal. Shadow. There's the jackal. There's Shadow. The jackal is still going strong. The Shadow and Blackie seem to be slowing down. One of the other challenges of farming here is managing the water. This is one of the natural springs in the valley of the property. This is the pump house, and this is the pump. The pump pushes the water from the spring all the way up the hill to Bush Baby Lodge, further up the hill to the factory. Oh yeah, did I mention there's a factory? Yeah, there's a factory. They used to produce vanilla here, but now they've retrofitted it for animal feed. And then even further up the hill to the farmhouse, where it sits in cisterns like this. But also running all throughout the property is a network of canals, which has been built to channel the natural spring water toward the gardens to be used for irrigation. Not just to water the six gardens, but there are also fruit trees everywhere. Papaya, cocoa, coffee, vanilla, soursop, avocado, guava, passion fruit, giant passion fruit, mulberries, whatever this thing is, I don't know, you tell me, but it's edible, and bananas. Bananas, 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 bananas. There are bananas everywhere. Did you know that bananas start off with these cute little yellow flowers? So that's it. That's all of the gardens, all of the animals, and all of the pastures. Kind of, but I'll get back to that. Now, you must be asking me, how on earth is that possible? How on earth does somebody manage a farm so massive? Basically, it takes a village. There are three other family members who have houses on the property. There are three farm managers who also live here and oversee various aspects of the farm. And there are innumerable staff who live on the property. The people who work and live here all have their own houses with their own plot of land where they keep chickens and grow their own veggies. And most of them have their own guard dogs. And some of them even have their own herd of cattle or goats. So when I give you a tour of the property and I show you all of these gardens and animals and pastures, I am not even including all the gardens and animals and pastures that belong to the people who work here. This is Charles. He's one of the gardeners. His entire family helps him in the garden. Normally his children would go to school in the daytime, but because of COVID, all the schools are closed. So they are unschooling too. When this is how you cut the grass, you need a lot of staff to do it. One of the things that I love about unschooling on this property is that the kids get to learn how much work goes into producing their food. So they see the beans being planted and they see the beans being harvested and they see the beans being dried on the lawn. They help me boil the milk to pasteurize it. They help me skim the cream and shake it until it turns into butter. They helped me sprout a pineapple. And we even harvested cocoa and made our own chocolate. And we had some to eat because cocoa beans are really yummy. The other thing I love about living here is all the forests. There are three main forest walks on the property. The first forest walk heads into the rainforest in the valley. The creek zigzags through the trail. And especially when it rains, the kids take lots of detours through the muddy patches. So the kids always need a couple of changes of clothes after a walk in this forest. This trail takes us through one of our favorite places, the guava field, where we love to have picnics and climb trees and eat guavas until their tummies hurt. The second forest walk 
takes you through a different rainforest with a different stream running through it. And the kids have also found plenty of wet and muddy places to explore in this forest. This is why we call it an adventure. <laughs> The third forest walk is the furthest from Bush Baby, but it is also the driest, <laughs> and the sun shines through the canopy to make for some beautiful exploring and great bird watching. The final place that the kids like to go is called the Clay Pond. It is a small spring that opens up in a spot that has lots of clay. So every time we go there, there's lots of splashing and lots of mud and lots of laughs. Are you noticing a theme? So I put all this work into making this video about this beautiful property. And in a few months, the whole video is gonna be obsolete because they are investing in developing and improving the property to make it an even more extraordinary place. They've already built the new bathrooms and showers so that they can accommodate campers. And they're building more guest houses and this pile of logs will soon be a new, improved Casisira. So there's some really exciting changes happening here and I can't wait to see the future of Bush Baby Lodge. And I feel so lucky that I got to spend so much time here and that my kids got to spend so much time here and that we got to meet all these awesome people that we've met and these friends that I think we'll remember for our whole lives. And I'm really glad I got to share it with you. So thanks for hanging out with us. Take care.